two atomic power countries had their worst relations due to the recent constitutional changes of India regarding the Kashmir issue. Here we will reveal all the latest updates on Kashmir and the views of the ordinary people. Please view this video to its end so that you don't miss any updates. In the absence of communication networks and reliable news, hearsay and conjecture run rampant. If an area is cordoned off by security forces, for example, people assume that violence has broken out there. But there's no way to verify it. These unofficial channels are amplified because residents do not trust local papers or national television news. They believe those journalists are towing the official line from the Hindu nationalist government and refusing to portray the hardships on the ground. We don't get any news. The Indian media reports fake news. They say schools are open, shops are open, traffic is moving. But look around you. You are in the heart of Srinagar. But shops are closed, schools are closed, people are distressed. The news I've watched is totally fake. We can't trust the media anymore. We can't trust what they are saying. A newsroom without internet, phone lines or mobile connections. This is Kashmir in 2019. For Ishfaq Tantri, a reporter for a national newspaper, the computers at work are simply to write his stories on. To get his work to the paper's headquarters in another city, he has to save it on a pen drive and take it to a media facilitation centre run by the government. The centre has one internet connection and five computers for hundreds of local, national and international journalists. It's also where he can catch up with other reporters on what they are hearing. But these aren't the only hurdles he and his colleagues in Kashmir face. It's very difficult to get the official version for that instant story. And we have to be very careful. And you can say there have been, you can say many journalists have been summoned by the government, uh, the officials. Why did you get from this information? This, I can say, it's sort of, you can say, threat and coercion also. The current situation of Kashmir is that a presidential decree issued on August 5 revoked Article 370 of India's constitution that guaranteed special rights to the Muslim majority state, including the rights to its own constitution and autonomy to make laws on all matters except defense, communication and foreign affairs. The Indian government revoked the special status accorded to Indian administrated Kashmir in its constitution, the most far-reaching political move on the disputed region in nearly 70 years. The move was worsened the already heightened tensions with neighboring Pakistan, which said it would downgrade its diplomatic relations with India. Mainly, India and Pakistan claim Kashmir in full but rule it in part. The nuclear-armed neighbors have fought two of their three wars over the disputed territory. A rebuilding in India-administrated Kashmir has been ongoing for 30 years. In this case, Pakistan's foreign minister has warned that India's illegal occupation of Muslim-majority Kashmir region could drive the two nuclear-armed countries into an accidental war while also accusing New Delhi of turning Kashmir into the largest prison on this planet. The U.S. President Donald Trump said the tension between India and Pakistan was less heated. Now, compared to two weeks ago, he, he retreated his offer to help the two countries approach him. The President told reporters at the White House on Monday that, India and Pakistan are having a conflict over Kashmir, as you know. I think it is a little bit less heated right now than it was two weeks ago. In the meantime, Kashmir alleged abuse by Indian Army. They said residents in a dozen villages have accused Indian soldiers of multiple human rights abuses, including beatings and electric shocks forcing them to eat dirt or dink filthy water, poisoning their food supplies and threatening to take away and marry their female relatives. Though an Indian Army spokesman in the main city Srinagar dismissed the accounts as completely baseless. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has hailed his path 
groundbreaking move to strip the Kashmir region and administration of its autonomy in a strongly worded speech marking India's Independence Day. He said, our freedom fighters fought hard and long for a free nation, but because of Article 370 and 35A, there were issues. But today, I can say, standing here at the Red Fort with pride, that we are one nation and one constitution, said the 68-year-old Hindu nationalist leader. We do not believe in creating problems or prolonging them. In less than 70 days of the new government, Article 370 has become history. And in both houses of parliament, two-thirds of the members supported this step, he said. 